this is the task that we just ran. Uh, total run duration about 20 seconds, including everything. Uh, 20 it milliseconds. You, yeah, it also shows you 19 seconds was the actual oh, time seconds, taken yeah, by okay. this test case. And then uh, the browser version, it was executed on in Google status and your machine. Uh, it also captures a snapshot at various steps, which is again definable. You could uh, instruct it to capture snapshot always, or you could say only on page changes, or only on failure, or you could capture snapshot never. You could also configure whether you wanted to capture JPEG only, or you know, this is a JPEG snapshot that was taken, or you could also say uh, HTML snapshot. Wherein, you know, in so many instances, you will get failures like I could not identify the software. Now, if you have just the JPEG snapshot, you cannot really debug the uh, object properties and extract object identification, if you can see in UI. So you can always go to HTML, you know, do some uh, inspect element and see, and then you you can realize whether the object description have changed or something else. So that makes it quite usable. Other thing is, you know, uh, you do not always need to use the UI or the command line tool. You can always uh, use the Excel based in interface also which we also use for execution distribution. Uh, it's got three basic parts. Uh, one is parameter sheet where you could say, okay, what is your controller? Uh, those are pretty much detailed about it. But uh, basically it would be like a post worksheet wherein you would say, okay, I have these many computers which I wanted to use for execution. You, can, you could list hundreds of computers here. The key thing is you create a group wherein you set the column values great equals one. And in the nodes you say, okay, in this group, these are the number of nodes that are available. And then when you run your patches, uh, you could always say, delete it from here. Just play the fresh patch file. You'll get all your test suits listed here. Then you choose, okay, what environment you want to run it on. I say demo, and then which browser, uh, say Firefox. And then I say, okay, uh, in Firefox, I want it to run on, say, instead of local machine, I can choose local, or I can choose source grid. When I say source grid, execute yes, and when I hit start automation, it will actually start automation on source grid and all three in parallel. If I move back here, this is my source accounts. The test should appear here right now. Okay, first appeared. Um, you could always say something like this. Okay, it's this is console which you can either hide or keep visible if you want. You got another test case running, and you got another test case running. So this test suite contains three test cases. They are all running in distributed mode, and then you can, of course, as the feature is, you can always, you know, view live video. So, so what, what do you? Any, anything else, uh, Anil? Uh, I guess I'm pretty much it. Just wanted to emphasize one stance, which is, uh, you know. The power lies in the host worksheet, which is, uh, you know, you could uh, enlist n number of uh, computers, whether they are private cloud, uh, working cloud, Amazon, RC2, any, anything. You could use local execution, remote execution, whatever way you want them. And so, uh, so thank you, Anil. So, yes, so, really, so really the power of this is in the spreadsheet. The power of this is in how you can set up the workflow. You can set up any, any space you want. And, and the best part about this is that you really don't need programmers. You really can build this without using programmers. And, and that's the part that I think is the fun part. That's what we are focused on. And when we think about the enterprises, we are finding that that's a store, you know, our enterprises understand that, and that's where uh, they are helping us uh, as well, learning on some of the stuff. And what we are also finding is, you know, the transition from Selenium to, uh, from, from Microsoft tools or HP tools or anything into Selenium, is not as easy as it looks in the real enterprises. I think in startups it's different, and, and this framework is helping them uh, do the transition in a much easier way. Questions? Thanks, Anil. You're welcome. So I winged the demo uh, since I'm not very tech, I mean, I don't know this framework as well, but Anil is here to answer your questions. Yes. So it's not an open source project, fortunately or unfortunately. We, <laughs> we are still trying to figure out how to, to, to market this. Right? What we are finding is it's, it's really, really valuable uh, to our customers. 
uh, we, we're still trying to figure out the business model. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to you know, understand how this could help. There's a lot of intellectual property in this that we have uh, tried to build. And, and uh, honestly, you know, I, I'm talking to a lot of people to try to figure out, is there a business model on this? Or is this something that you give away for free? And then there is a business model somewhere else. I agree with that. And, and you know, so, so by the way, right, some of our big, I mean, they're big customers, are 400, 600 million dollar companies. Uh, the, what, what they are also, you know, again, we are working with them also to figure out the, the, the business model. And what we are finding is that there is a combination of being able to license the source codes, being able to license the binaries, and, and, and you know, then you are, you, you're not logged in because you have the source code, right? So, so there's a business model that sometimes that is working. Sometimes it's working, it's just the framework. Sometimes it's working that they, they only want us to use the framework for them to help them uh, uh, license the test cases. I mean, just have them us work on the test cases, right? But, but I agree with you. Uh, I, I don't know the right answer. I, I do know that uh, I, it's, uh, you know, QTP is the wrong model, right? That I know. We don't have a model today, so it is different. <laughs> what is the licensing cost? I, I, honestly, I mean, those are very good questions. Honestly, this is very good questions. I think, um, I, I wish I had the answers for you right away, right? What I'd, what I'd strongly recommend to you guys is, you know, have a much stronger demo, see if it fits your stuff, and then let's work out and figure out how and what will work. Um, and, on, and I'm not being facetious. I mean, these, as I said, this, came out of the work that we are doing, right, with our customers. That's how this came into existence. We filed for a patent for this, we've done a lot of stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, we also want to make, I mean, you know, unfortunately we are not free developers that are doing this for free. I mean, you know, we, we, we are trying to see how our company benefits, right? I mean, we all win if we win as well, right? Otherwise, uh, so that's, I mean, in, in the end, I think, I think if all, if, if all our customers start to think that, okay, we have to win as well, then I think there will be a, definitely a way in which we can all work. Yes? So oh, yeah. I'll try, but I have an ill. I have no worries. Basically, you know, uh, the way your website your office right. is uh, spreadsheet, um, I will not be able to do it always. There are situations where I need to pass certain uh, parameters in which, you know, uh, with which I'll, uh, I can identify an object. Okay. So there is no static pages in my uh, Okay. How do I handle a dynamic? Uh, okay. All right. Second one would be, say in case, uh, all we know is a uh, 3D authentication page, which we use in online transaction. So when we have a 3D online, uh, you know, secure page concern, we may need to enter any of the three digits of your third digit password. So how do you actually handle that situation as well? So, so there are a lot of situations you need to handle. So I, I, I'll see if Anil can answer. Otherwise, what I'd request is let's set up a much more deeper demo, and uh, we can have a much more Q&A answer. So Anil, did you understand the question? I could not hear him fine, so if you can repeat this. So uh, his first question, let's start with the first question, was if you don't have static pages and you have dynamic pages, and you need, in order to test a particular, in order to even identify an object, you need to set, send certain parameters to identify an object, correct? Then how do you do that? Can you do that? Uh, yes, we can do that. In fact, that's how we are doing in so many cases. You see, uh, in most of our application that we are testing, we have search results, which are pretty much dynamic based on the search, search criteria you are in file. So how we do it is based on using variables wherein we can retrieve and you know set variables and then those variables can be used as part of object descriptions. All right. And then his second question, which I didn't completely understand, was the 3D, um, if there are three digits in a secure page. Yeah. Actually, okay. when you use a code online, you know, we all face this. Uh, you will have a 3D authentication page for a Visa and MasterCard. So you will have to enter any of your three digits. So you will not know only when the page comes up, you will have to enter first digit or fifth digit, it's going to be dynamic. Oh, okay. So how do we actually, you know, identify its fifth digit and map that particular digit to the uh, data? There is a of programming involved when we actually do an automation on that page. 
So uh, I don't know if you understand the question. I, I don't know the exact scenario, but what I think he's saying is if, you know, if you, in an HTTPS environment, if you have to identify a particular person's credit card and make sure that he's the right person. No, no. When you actually use a credit card in an online transaction, right. and what we, first thing is, you let all your uh, transaction details. And this is a freely secure online transaction which happens currently. So you will have an, uh, no, Visa or MasterCard, you will be Okay. And you have a password of 10 digits. You may need to enter. It will dynamically ask you to enter third digit, fifth digit, or seventh digit, or it will ask you to fourth and third. Okay. Something like that. So how do we handle that situation? Did you understand that, or should we? Uh, uh, you you have to. Pay. Okay. So let, let's set it offline and then yes. do it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, guys, for coming. Thank you very much.